Hi there, I'm Peter Griffiths. I'm a creative coach uh, based in Berlin. My background is really helping creatives and actually anyone bring cr more creativity in their life, whether you're an artist or you could even just be a parent, you know, in terms of bringing creativity to other aspects of your life, really. If you were looking at it from an artist aspect, it would be, you know, working on music or painting or something like that. It's this state that you get into where, you know, time just doesn't exist. You, you know, lots of people call it flow. Lots of people say they just go to another place. A lot of people have a misunderstanding or, you know, they, they get a bit confused by that word creativity. And it's really interesting that lots of my clients say, I'm not creative. And then after a chat, five, 10 minutes, I can see them light up because they realize that in lots of aspects of the life, non-artistry non creativity comes out in lots of different ways, you know, problem solving, how you handle your boss in work, how you approach, you know, where you're going to go on holiday. You can get really creative in so many aspects of your life. And then there's the other side as an artist where you're using it to call it an output or it's something you want to give back to the world. So yeah, when you mentioned flow, I mean, as an artist, I spent many years actually struggling to find where is creativity, why have I lost it? And, you know, dealing with confidence and stuff like this. But what I realized is creativity is actually innate, innate to every human. And it's just a matter of being in the present moment and just letting go. Call it, I don't know, how would they explain it? It's like being a satellite or a conduit. Once you let go and you just have fun and you get into this playful state, creativity just flows through you, if that makes sense. Yeah. If you want to become a really good artist, it's great, you know, lots of people are naturally talented, but what I find on, you know, when I get to the, you know, the bottom of where, what, what they're about, what's their story, most of the time, or this is my experience, as an artist, they've actually grafted in terms of their skills. So they've learned how to play, for example, an instrument. And I know you've heard this, um, this statement about, you know, you've got to do 10,000 hours of practice before you get good. Actually, I don't believe that at all. Because I can say as an artist myself, I did practice a lot and I was given a lot of opportunity to play live and do gigs and be in bands, etc. But actually I've met artists after, you know, a thousand hours and they're absolutely amazing at what they do. So there's that part, you know, you need to learn a skill if you want to be good as an artist, but also creativity is there and it's available without any practice or any real deep thought involved. If you disengage that intellectual side of your brain, you can, <laughs> this is the funny thing. So when I deal with um, creativity, say with a corporate client or in a corporate context, it's interesting how they all want to get quite academic about it or, you know, get very scientific. But as soon as I park that part of the brain with them and they bring back like this like childlike state and play, they find some amazing solutions to problems that, you know, on the face of it look very, very complex. But as soon as you let go and just look at the many opportunities that are available, it's like I said before, you know, we talk about flow. It just, it, you, are, you are a receiver, it just appears. And actually, if you try and reverse engineer it, it's quite difficult because our egos might want to say, right, you know, I'm the best artist in the world or look at how I've resolved that problem. But a lot of the times when I've tried to find out how did that get resolved, it's actually quite difficult to explain how you did it, if that makes sense. So, you know, when you mentioned about the flow part, when time disappears and, you know, you could be working on something and it seems like you're in, in that state for a week, but it could only be half an hour. It's really difficult to understand from a intellectual side of things, you know, how, how did you get there? And the only way I can explain that to people is you just have to let go. And if you do something for the sheer joy of it, or you just think, okay, I, I can't resolve it intellectually, what have I got available? And it's this innate, capacity that we all have as humans that this is the bit that lights me up when i see people realize that they've always had that available to them then they can do amazing things 
What I've realized though, a lot of the times when I look back at my own music career, which was a total roller coaster, I'm not gonna lie, you know, there were some really tough times, but this was simply because I just didn't see it. It was my level of understanding at that time. When I, like I said before, when I was looking for creativity or I lost confidence or I was banging my head against the brick wall about deadlines and stuff like this, as soon as I started to just see it as fun and get more in a playful state, and just to be clear, when I say get playful, I don't mean become a child, but it's just connecting to that, again, this innate capacity that we all have. Um, and again, this is just my understanding of what I've seen myself. As we get further on as adults, we're just conditioned. We just pick up a lot of baggage on the way. But the cool thing is that what we had from day one when we were born, it's always there. It's just that we forget it as adults. The people that don't get paid, and I don't get paid for music now, I don't have time. I'm, you know, I'm usually helping creatives, coaching them. I would love to spend more time on music, but realistically now, it, it's very difficult to make ends meet in this industry, like any creative industry, you know, it's a bit of a roller coaster. I don't know if there's any difference. I think there's just, if you really get deep and enjoy it and get into flow, it's this very same whether you get paid for it or not, if that makes sense. Well, according to Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, creativity is not really creativity unless we do get paid for it, unless society values what we're doing and they're willing to pay for it. Those are not his words. Mm -hmm. I'm using my own words, but what he's saying is that without societal evaluation, we can't really call it creativity. So with that model, mm -hmm. that what we're talking about, the musician making music, being playful and loving it, but he doesn't get paid for it. That is mm. not creativity. You see, uh, I can't really agree with that simply because, I mean, if you think about it, it creativity is just a label, it's a word. Mm. But I think if you look at this innate power that we have as humans, it's kind of beyond words. And that's why it's bigger than, you know, whether it's, you get paid for or not you are either creative or you're not. So if you're not in a creative state of flow and you're not doing something, then there's only two, there's only that one place. I, I can't see a separation. If you get paid for it, it means that you've got a job and in Western society especially, you could argue that you've got more credibility because you can earn a wage from it. But I would beg to differ simply because I've seen people apply creativity in many, many aspects of the life. So to say that it's not creativity, I don't know, I just can't agree with that really. It's an interesting aspect of it. And I understand what he's saying that, you know, are you really an artist if you're not getting paid for it? But that's a real shame because if, if you were to put that message out to the wider people, you know, to the world, then it's exactly what I see in many clients. I've been told that I'm not very good as an artist. I've been told that I cannot be creative. Or, you know, it's even the story that we tell ourselves on loop. You know, I'm not very creative, so therefore I'm not going to try and do anything. But then as soon as I point people back to that, or that's the experience I've seen when I speak to people, I've realized that it, they totally light up. And then they do amazing things, whether they get paid for, you know, paid for it or not. Mm -hmm. And as a musician, I can really tell you that some of the people I work with right now, just for the fun of it, are world-class in terms of their output. Can you measure it in terms of if they get paid or not? I don't know. I just, I just don't see a difference because how can you not say you're being creative if, if you're in the state of flow? Or if you paint a picture, whether someone pays a million pounds for it or zero pounds, can you really say that's not creativity? Do you see, do you see what I mean? Yes, I do. So for example, as a child for me, I went through a lot of um, ups and downs in the school system, for example, as a creative. I just didn't connect with my teachers. I actually believed when I left school that I was stupid. But then later on, I realized that I had all this you know, ability, which I put to good use literally as soon as I left school. And then you know, I ended up in jobs more well-paid than any of the people that left my class, including the teachers. And again, not, not to go into the ego part of it, but I just think, are we worrying too much as adults about labels? Labels are just language. You know, it's just a word. You know, it, is yeah. it really not? Words we need to have shared understanding of. And, yeah. you know, I, I agree with you that 
um, everyone is potentially creative. I agree with that. And at the same time, I think when we're talking about creativity, in my view, and also in Mihai Csikszent Mihai's view and many others, is that it's not just about the creative person because creativity doesn't occur in a vacuum. And this is where society comes into it, that mm -hmm. creativity is, is about more than a, being a creative person. It's about being persuasive in society as well. And your experience at school, that's quite typical of creative people, highly creative people, because as we say, everyone is potentially creative, but it's a spectrum in the same way that some people are highly intelligent, some mm -hmm. people are highly creative, and they tend to be unpopular with their teachers because they challenge, they question, they don't conform, and mm -hmm. they don't do what they're expected to do. So perhaps, you know, do you identify with being like that at school? Yeah, I get what you're saying, but when you say vacuum, I think there's a total misunderstanding from a psychology from a psychology perspective because, in terms of the psych psychology around you know your thinking and all of this stuff, if you're conscious, there is no vacuum. So if you're in a creative state, whether you're a child, an adult, and you apply creativity to, to any aspect of your life, therefore you're creative. The rest of it is just you know we're, we're overcomplicating it. If you talk about artistry and skills, then that's totally different. So, for example, for me to perform at the level I did and to DJ and play live at festivals like Glastonbury and stuff like this, I had skills. You know, I had to develop that. And you have to be conscious in terms of putting time in. And, you know, I had to make a lot of sacrifices in terms of, you know, going out and partying and being with friends as opposed to practicing and practicing and practicing for hours on end, you know. Um, but in terms of just that simple word in its sim simple form, you know, if you strip away all of the other bits around society and what you're going to do with it, creativity is creativity. There's no, there's no other option. You're either creative, and if you want to measure it, that's fine. And you say spectrum, there is no spectrum because you're either creative or you're not. If you go into the state of flow, therefore you're creative. I think we're overcomplicating it in terms of you know applying the spectrum to it of course if you want to measure someone as an artist or their ability in terms of something they've decided to do as an endeavor then yeah that can be completely measured because it's more about skill set but creative energy you can't switch it on or off it's always there it's innate and it's a call it a superpower it's something that we have from birth so, you, you know, if you look at an iPhone, it has software called OSX, right? When we're born, we have an amazing set and, um, you know, it, it's all there, uh, great software. It never wears out. It never gets corrupted. The only issue is it's what we, you know, apply ourselves in terms of becoming an adult. It's all of the stuff, the labels we pick up, society around us, the, the, the mindset, all the different views. But what never changes is that innate capacity that we have from birth. And one of those skills, called these, these human things that we have, call it potential, is creativity. And I've never met a human on the planet who isn't creative, even though many, many people are told by society that they can't create. Why would they even try? You know, that's, it's just, just what I see. Mm -hmm. And some people are... Um creative in you know maybe negative uh, that not everything we create is life enhancing some people are really good at using their energy in being destructive causing chaos which is not useful or valuable to to anyone as well and you can apply creativity and this is the thing to literally anything whether it's positive or negative but this is the thing as humans we get too academic about it you know but that's the thing. So if, if you're saying it's that aspect, you know, it, you can't pick, you're either creative or you're not. And, you know, if you look at some of the famous figures in the past, you know, for example, if you pick Adolf Hitler, you know, I'm based in Berlin. This guy applied very creative. He got very deep in terms of his creativity. He was a very clever person. But did I agree with what, you know, did I agree with what he did? You know, he caused the, you know, the Second World War. And look at the atrocities that were caused and all of his mindset. Um, but that's the thing when it gets really tricky is when we start to measure it or say that person 
we look, then they look at it, ego and status because they say, okay, that person is more creative than person X. That's where it gets really tricky, confusing for people. And what I've noticed with my clients is that's what they pick up from society that I don't really want to be creative. I'm too scared because, you know, I'm not an artist. That's usually the most common thing that people say. And the second part is why, why would I do it? I don't think I'm allowed to be creative. And that's, well, it's such a pain. It requires taking a lot of risks. You know, as a musician, you, you take risks. The first time you play in public, you're taking a risk because people might not like what you're playing. So at every level, you know, every level we expand our comfort zone, we have to take a risk. And not everyone has the courage to take the risk. No, I totally agree. But again, that's a separate thing. And creativity, it's there to use it. And you either let go and you go in a really deep state or you've got things on it and you're not present and you can still get creative. For example, I wrote a lot of music in not really a good place. And I, and I chuckle now when I, when I listen back to some of the records on my output, I can tell you exactly what kind of state I was, you know, mentally. And then when I see the stuff or I listen to the things that I did in very deep flow or I was just somewhere else in the universe, there was nothing on it. You know, and, it, and you can hear that in the music and I can hear that in other artists when I see them perform and they go somewhere else. Mm. I wouldn't say that takes balls. The courage part is even pre-created. That's the decision to even drag your ass onto stage, if that makes sense. Mm. So, you know, that, that first step, again, that could be call it your wisdom, call it your inner guidance. That's something separate. But in terms of that create, if you decide to do something creative, then you're almost like a satellite receiver. You know, you don't have a choice in that. Even though our ego likes to think that we are in full control. And that's the thing. When I look back, I love to lay claim to all of the wonderful things that I've, you know, been involved in. All the people I've met, you know, being a musician, which I was really lucky to work with some amazing people. But a lot of it, I can't really lay claim to it because it was just, once you get in that state of flow, some might, people might call it the universe. Some people, you know, if you're religious, might be, you know, getting closer to God, this kind of thing. All I can say is, um, you know, what I said before about trying to reverse engineer. Wow, that was amazing. Look what I did. It was really difficult to then break that down into its parts, even though as a highly skilled producer, and, you know, I can make electronic music, I still couldn't cookie cutter or copy it, if that makes sense. Mm. And this is really interesting because I spent a decade trying to do that, which just, you end up just torturing yourself. The more I let go and the more I just embraced actually doing it for the sheer hell of it, it actually got better. My output become purer, regardless of skill. Right. And this is why I try and point people in other aspects of non-artistry, you know, in terms of being creative as a parent, as a school teacher, as a leader in a corporate entity that's when the magic happens for me. Because when I see people in very high positions where they've got quite a lot of responsibility and power, when they apply creativity to say a team, or, you know, as I said before about problem solving, blows my mind. Because you just can't, you know, work your way around that without applying a good dollop of creativity in that mix. Yeah. So when you say before, I, I understand from an academic point, there's, you know, when you mentioned about spectrums, etc. But again, if you look at these historic artists, what I've learned is that, you know, let's be honest, we're, we're not, you know, we were never there when these artists were actually alive. And what I learned by history is we actually put them too much on the pedestal. So yeah, I get that. And we've got a lot of documentation in terms of their output because they did produce a lot of art. But the narrative around these artists, I find is never really that useful. If you want to get really scientific or, you know, start to apply that and start to measure creativity, then that's where it gets tricky for me. Mm. 